Hey, hi, and hello everyone, and welcome to one new feature for every weapon class in Splatoon 3. Today, I'm joined by Pochara, who helped create the ideas for some of his most used classes that I don't have as much experience with. Hello everyone! Most of these features are ones that probably won't get added to the game, but would be pretty cool. We're trying to keep game balance in mind here, so we can't just give all sloshers one-shot hitboxes and call it a day. Be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content and want to see more. Go check out Charles channel in the description as well, and without further ado, let's get into it. Starting off with the shooters. This class is very basic and is supposed to be the easy to learn, hard to master class, so I didn't want to add anything that would completely change the way they play. Especially considering they have by far the most privilege in the game right now, it can't be something that affects their balance too much either. So I ended up simply giving them improved squid rolls and squid surge. One of shooters main focus is their mobility, so giving them a bit more distance on the squid rolls could be a neat improvement. As for the surges, I think a neat idea would be to make it so that they have improved accuracy after a surge, kinda like what Intensify Action does. Don't worry, the changes will get much more drastic with other classes. Continuing with the rollers, they already got their vertical flicks in Splatoon 2, so it would be weird to give them another new flick, so I decided on giving them a sort of charge to their roll. The roll is by far the least useful part of a roller right now, which when you see the name, doesn't exactly seem like that's how it should be. Therefore, they will now be able to charge up while rolling, and launch forward when fully charged. Since the roll itself already uses ZR, it can't use ZR to charge, so I think it could be cool if you could charge by holding the sub and main weapon buttons together while rolling. That way, if you want to use your sub, you can still do so by letting go of the ZR button first and then using your sub button. The most similar thing to this in the game right now is Kraken, so it'd be similar to that in most regards. Minus the invincibility, of course. This might be a bit weak on its own though, so I think it'd be cool to let it also roll over bombs and destroy them. It would make sense with the context of the weapon and be a much needed buff to the class as a whole. Next up are the chargers, which may seem like they're in a really good spot right now, which they are, but the reason isn't because of the weapons themselves, it's because of the maps. Once Nintendo fixes said maps, chargers aren't going to be very good as there will be many options to deal with them, particularly the ones that require multiple shots to kill. This is why from now on, all chargers will have their full charge shots pierce through enemies, even the ones that don't one shot. This makes other chargers slightly worse though, so to keep the balance more even, other chargers uncharged shots will now be able to pierce as well. This can allow them to deal with more threats more easily without improving the aspects they're loath for right now. Sloshers have by far the most diverse set of main weapons of any class, so I had to think hard as something all of them consistently do. That thing? Jumping. Sloshers are very heavily based on verticality, which is what jumping is all about, while also giving them better mobility. Therefore, all sloshers will now give you increased jump height, which really lets you reach up high with those flicks. This can make a variety of things easier, such as painting walls more efficiently, fighting something like an inkjet, or even just general parkour throughout maps. Will it break some parts of the game? Maybe. Will it be fun? Absolutely. Splatlings are up next, and this was a really interesting one in my opinion. Splatlings of course have to be charged up in order to fire, and barely running out of charge is one of the most painful things to experience. That's why I made it so that now, when you get a kill with a splatling, it actually increases the amount of time you have left on the charge. It of course wouldn't be much seeing as if it was, it'd be kind of busted, but having it refilled by about half a second for each kill would be pretty fair, and it could be rebalanced if it's too weak or strong. With splatlings like Ballpoint and Nautilus, you might think this takes away their special traits, but it ends up being a completely different thing, as those can still paint infinitely longer than others without having to get any kills, and are able to get the charge up to full from charging mid-fire, rather than only a slight bit from having to get a kill. As for the sound effect, they wouldn't even really have to make a new one. I think the sound of Brella's shield regenerating each time it's extended would be clean and satisfying, while doing the job to tell you that you now have more charge. Overall, I think this encourages more hype plays with spotlings and a healthy playstyle, which would be good for the game while giving the class a much deserved buff. Next up are the brushes, which are well known for the ability to traverse the map fast and get behind opponents. One of the reasons is their ink resistance that is added to inkbrush when they roll, which helps them turn while being surrounded by enemy ink without taking damage or being slowed down. One way this could be improved is by having not only all brushes have this ink res effect, not just the ink brush, so Octobrush and future ones could have it, but also having this passive active while they're flicking, allowing you to strafe into enemy terrain without taking damage and get a bit closer to enemies. Blasters are up next, and one of their main weaknesses is their special output, which is pretty pathetic without the help of a bomb or a really cheap special. And since the limit is 180 in this 
this game, it can't go as low as in the previous one. I think a cool way to give them a bit better special output without changing that as a weakness is to add a bonus of 10 special points for every kill, while assists could add an extra 5 points. This means that blasters would be able to get good synergy if they're playing to their role correctly, controlling space and threatening players, and encourages them to combo more off their teammates to ensure they get more specials for the match. Moving on to Splatoon 2 classes, we have the Duelies, which are already showing more depth than any of the Splatoon 1 classes do. Therefore, we'll go with another simple change and allow them to jump after performing both of their dodge rolls, much like the Duelie Squelchers can already. Squelchers already make great use of the improved accuracy while having slightly more mobility and range with the jump. Giving it to all of them would help the less mobile ones like Lucas have a bit more of a fighting chance. Up next are the Brellas. This class is struggling a lot since it just isn't really that great right now, so there's a lot of things you can do. However, something it's been struggling with a lot is its damage, so let's work in a way that Brellas could all increase their damage output. From now on, for every 100 damage the shield takes, the damage of your pellets on the next shot will increase by 2. So, say you get shot by a charger and you take 500 HP of damage. Your shield may be broken, but now you have your damage increased by 10, allowing you to get a very reliable 2 shot. Basically, think of it like Incineroar's Revenge. If you're able to shield and tank a bit of damage, you're slowly charging up the power of your shots. If you shield for a long time, you can charge it to absurd degrees. This damage buff would only apply when you hit a shot on an enemy, so you'd be able to paint safely without it affecting. The damage would cap at 99.9 for Brella, 49.9 for Undercover, and Tents would have none, for obvious reasons. It's already a one-shot. Stringers are one of the two new weapon classes in Splatoon 3 so far, and thus already have a decent amount of depth in options. However, I think a really cool idea would be making them able to charge with their sub weapons. Let me explain. So we all know how stringers work. You hold ZR, charge up the arrows, and launch them. But what if you could hold the sub weapon button and launch your sub with it? This could not only add versatility to its shots with something like launching three tri stringer shots and a burst bomb for maximum kill power, but it would also allow sub weapons to be used in ways never seen before. It would of course take the combined ink usage of the charge shot and the sub weapon, but it'd be well worth it having a launchable ink miner squeak in, or even something like a fizzy bomb along with the shots to make him more devastating than ever before. The possibilities here are basically endless. Finally, we have the Splatanas, a class with two very solid main weapon options, so the change here will more be a quality of life thing than anything else. The charge slash dash could be really nice for mobility, so let's enhance it a little bit. Now when doing the dash, you can press ZL to easily cancel it in the middle of it, just like you can during the charge. This allows you to use it as a movement mix-up and control your timing with it a little bit more, to enhance it as a mobility tool. And with that, that's one new feature for every single Splatoon 3 weapon class. Thanks so much to Char for helping me out. Again, his channel's in the description if you want to check it out. But with that, thanks for watching, be sure to like and subscribe so we can hit 5k by May, and I'll see you guys in the next one.